If I keep on working out like this, will I look like him? <sighs> As you can see today, I'm not wearing pink anymore. Yeah, so sexy now because later on I'm going to do my workout. And today you can see that I have somebody with me and he is my personal trainer, he's Alvin. And today we're going to talk about how we can start fitness and some of the myths that people have with fitness, especially ladies, right? Yeah, a lot of people thought, I don't want to gym because I don't want to build the bulk and things like that. But I think today we have to talk about the importance of uh, having that muscle mass and especially in my age group. And I'm going to just confess, I'm 46 years old. Later, Alvin, maybe he wants to share his age. So uh, yeah, we are not that young, but I think we still look good. So if we look good, we feel good. So. Alvin, hello! Hi, hello. Yes, Hi, thanks Colin. for uh, having this session together with us. Maybe first thing first, lah, huh? uh, we want to ask you is when did you like, did you start off as a, a fitness trainer, uh, as a career, you know, to be a fitness coach? Uh, well, I didn't actually uh, have always been in, uh, in the fitness industry. Actually, yeah. it's more like a midlife career switch for me. Oh. Uh, previously, I was more in the finance industry. Okay. Oh, same uh, like me, finance industry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, yes. uh, you know, along the way, I found a passion for training mm. and then, uh, you know, I got very passionate about it and I decided to pursue, uh, make a career switch. Fitness trainer for around three years. Three years yes. as a fitness coach. And yeah. what prompted you to become one? I always felt that in the beginning when I started training, had I had a uh, good help or someone was able to point me in the right direction, I would have mm. saved a lot of time. Um, and you know, throughout my training journey, you know, there were very many kind people that you know point me to the right direction. Uh, but there wasn't much structure to it and um, mm. you know so results sometimes you know you, you hit a, a plateau, you're unable to break through. Okay, okay. Yeah it can get very frustrating. So the one thing that made me decide to pursue the this yeah career fitness as a fitness yeah. coach is firstly I I took a license, uh -huh. right? It's more for yes. interest sake at first. Yeah. I know I just tell myself that maybe, mm. you know, uh, having a license just to get some knowledge yes. on training will help me with yes. my personal development. Mm. Uh, but along the way, you know, as I had my license, I started to help people. Mm. Uh, initially, it was ad hoc. La. I, didn't, yep. I didn't take any yep. fees yep. or anything, but I found that I kind of enjoyed it. Yes. And I found that I had a knack for it because I was able to help many of my friends yes. and even strangers uh, yep. with their exercise. Okay. So that's where I developed the interest and I decided to pursue further. So let me maybe just take one step back. Um, did, were you actually a, a fitness fanatic well, to start off? That means that since young, you like sports, you know, you always exercise, that's why you come into here. Actually, no. Most of my life, I mean, besides NS, of course, every man, every <laughs> guy goes through NS, that's where you're fittest. But after my NS, um, you know, I actually went to the banking industry, mm. yeah, and then I became very inact inactive. Yeah, okay. so you know, I uh, did not exercise, uh, lead a very unhealthy lifestyle. Um, you know, I was uh, drinking, I was even smoking at okay. one point in my life. So every night going out to have a late night, you know, supper, sleep late, you know, all the bad habits. Yeah, yeah, and as a result, my health suffered. My health suffered. Um, so. And I heard, yeah. uh, what was your weight then? Uh, that time you shared with me. Oh yes, yes. Uh, before I if started my <laughs> journey, I was 115 kgs. One yeah. one five kg. Yeah. Uh, and then and my now height. You are? Now I'm 87 kgs. Wow, yeah. you lost like one lady's weight. Yeah, <laughs> almost yes. <laughs> yes. So maybe later on we ask how you did that, lah. Huh? Sure, sure. Okay, so from there, 115 kg, you realize that there's something that you need it needs to be done. Yes. yes. My main motivation was my wife got pregnant mm. and her son coming along the way. My dad also wasn't in good health mm. and as a result, the whole family had to bear the burden of taking care of my dad. Mm. So he lost a lot of mobility when he hit 50s, 60s and I didn't want that for my son, yeah, for my children. So I decided to change my lifestyle mm. for my family. Yeah. Okay, okay. So the key thing is this, I think probably some of you over here uh, are thinking of, okay, I've not exercised before. All right, and I want to start. So, uh, how how I, how can they start exercising? Yes. Well, I think most important for people who have not been working out for a long mm. time, you got to take it slow, mm. because few things that you want to take note of is that when you have not been exercising for a long time, mm. your body is not conditioned yeah. to start uh, too rigorous of exercise. Okay. So what I always recommend is they start by at least getting active first. Mm. So it, very simple, small steps like you know taking daily walks. Yeah. Start slow and then when you feel better, you can start jogging. Mm. 
start moving around, do some body weight exercises. Okay. Yeah, nothing too intensive at the start. Mm. Especially if you do not have um, a supervision or someone to look out for you. Yeah. You might want to be just more careful on it to yes. prevent injuries. Yeah. And also, as not to um, demoralize yourself mm. and you know give yourself too much stress. Yeah. You know, yeah. you want to do things uh, for the long term. Yeah. So you mentioned about start with walking. So let me maybe give a little bit more tips to our viewers over here. So how long should we walk? Should we walk like 10 minutes, 5 minutes or 1 hour, 2 hours? Well, I always find that uh, it's very helpful if you can make walking part of your routine. Mm. For some of my clients, like mm. they, if you ask them to just take 1 hour uh, you know, in the morning or give them a specific time, yeah. it's um, to, to do the walk, it, it may be difficult. Yes. But if you make, make it a routine, like for example, after your lunch mm. or after your dinner, mm. I think dinner that's fine. Most people after dinner they are off work. Yeah. You can make it a habit to just take a walk for you know for a start half an hour. Yep. Twenty minutes to half an hour first, and then you slowly increase the duration that you walk. Mm. And the walking will also make you feel better because you digest, help you with the digestion. Yes. yes. Yeah. And you feel much better after the walk as well. So yeah. you incorporate it into your daily life. Make it like a routine. Okay. Yeah, that's something that would help you uh, be consistent. Yes. So I think the key thing first, a uh, very important thing, is to be active, right? We may not want to start with exercise first, but at least be active. Walking would be one of the ways. Maybe you want to jot it down. Walking would be one of the ways. Maybe half an hour after dinner, or at least I think maybe you can add up 10 minutes after every meal. 10 minutes, 10 minutes, 10 minutes, add up is 30 minutes altogether as well, yeah? So the key thing not, is not just about exercising, but we are talking about building muscle mass. I've been hearing about, you know, uh, things, um, especially ladies uh, with uh, muscle loss. What are the benefits of working out? Most importantly for working out, your first, first approach is also always about health, mm. getting healthy. Yeah. It is also about the long-term as well, your long-term health. Mm. Working out has many benefits. Yes. Uh, firstly, you get increase in your physical strength mm. and flexibility. Mm. Yeah? It also helps with preventing major illnesses, mm. right? And I think very important, like you mentioned earlier on for ladies, especially once you pass the age of 40, mm. right? Many ladies will start to experience, uh, may experience osteoporosis yeah. towards the later stages of their yes, life. Yes, yes. You lose bone density, yeah. right? And as a result, you lose mobility and you, you have a lot of issues uh, moving around later yeah. on in life. So what you want to do is, our weight training, all this will help mm. prevent all these uh, mm. issues. Yeah. Yeah. I think also it helps with your mental well being. We are all yeah. stressed at work. Um, exercise helps to, uh, in a way, uh, counter all the stress that you encounter yes. during your work or your daily life. Mm. Yeah. So yeah. that's another benefit from work, working out. Yeah. One of the key things I realized, uh, as I said, I, we are in mid 40s. Okay. Um, I mean, for ladies, I can feel it more. It used to be in the past, I do a lot of running. Running, I really love cardio kind of exercises. But uh, since last year, I realized when I weigh in on the weighing machine, stepping on the scale, I know a lot of uh, us ladies we want to lose weight. Okay, so it's oh wow, as the weight gets lighter and lighter, it seems better. But uh, it seems like that time my weight gets a little bit lighter, but I realize my body fat gets higher. Okay, and uh, it seems like also I get more and more flabby. So now it's not that I'm very toned. I think I can be better after the training. But still, you know, um, having that kind of flabbiness is not going to be helpful. I think that's the difference between like a weight loss and uh, a muscle mass loss. Mm. So the, the next question, maybe a lot of people will be thinking, now what's the difference between like, you know, weight loss and uh, muscle weight loss, that kind, you know? Okay. So I think what uh, Pauline is asking is about uh, whether or not the weight uh, on the scale mm. uh, is an indication of health or indication of fat loss. Mm. Well, um, one thing you want to be we want to be very clear is that for the numbers on the scale, while mm. it is an indication of your health, it is not the only factor that we should consider. Because one thing you must bear in mind that uh, our body don't just con contain uh, fats. Mm. It contains fats and muscles as well. Mm. So what happens is that uh, many of my clients, initially when they start training, they are not seeing a lot of drop in the, the weight. However, they, when they look at the mirror, they look at the, their clothes fit better, they look at yeah. the mirror, they look leaner as well. And why is this happening? It's because while you're losing fat percentage, you are also gaining muscle as well. And one thing you need to understand about 
muscles is that muscles take up much lesser space than fats. Mm. So as a result, even though uh, the numbers on the scale, the weighing, the weighing scale doesn't show a, a huge decrease, mm. but in your appearance, in the fitting of your clothes, you look much better, you feel better as yeah. well. So that's something that uh, you should take note. Like, don't just focus on the numbers on the weighing scale. It's not everything. To be told, no one's going to, when you're, when you're walking outside, no one's going to take a weighing scale and ask you what's your weight. Rather, it's how you look and how you feel that is yes. more important. People will look at your size. Like you drop one dress size. Seeing is believing. And uh, not only just that, we, yes, one of the key reasons when we want to exercise is definitely to look good. But we don't want to, you know, a lot of people also have the uh, thing about workout is uh, what if I train to and then I look like Elvin, like you, you know, I don't want it. <laughs> Especially as a woman, uh, I don't want to be, uh, in Chinese we call it Jin Gang Ba Bi, you know, I don't want to be a hawk. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, that is a question or rather something that I hear very often, especially from my lady clients. Uh, one of the most common statements I always hear is, I don't want to be like you, Elvin. That's one of the first things many of my female clients tell me. And what I always tell them or you know, what I always share with them is that, now firstly, uh, as a lady and versus a guy, uh, our DNA is different. We are built differently. Woman um, has much lower testosterone levels versus men. And testosterone is actually the hormones that is responsible for muscle building, muscle hypertrophy. So even if you take the same weight as uh, a guy, a man, you take heavy weights, you do the same amount of work and exercise, you're not going to build the same amount of muscle. Okay. Yeah? On the contrary, if you take heavy weights and you are strong as a lady, you're going to look leaner in fact. Mm. You're going to look more leaner, you're going to look more toned, you're going to look yeah. more fit. So on the contrary of what most ladies believe, you train hard, you look better. You don't, you don't, get, you don't get the bulk and size. So uh, I know a lot of ladies, they, they, when they look at some of the uh, magazines or even on the TV shows, uh, bodybuilding ladies that they are even as muscular as guys, they get very worried that if they train in the gym, will they look at that? Well, I want to say that uh, actually, unless you are undergoing the same extreme training that they are taking, extreme diet, they are eating a lot every day, uh, in a very big calorie surplus and having very extreme training routines like training twice a day every single day uh, you will not look like them yeah as everyday people just trying to get fit and healthy mm. yeah um, there's very little chance that you will look even remotely close to those ladies that you see on the screen so probably if I want to build my fitness level how often should I be training yeah well, how often you should be training should, is dependent on a few factors. Mm. Uh, number one, it depends on your age, mm. your health, mm. uh, whether you have any prior injuries, mm. and also your lifestyle, yeah. how much time you have for training. But if I were to give a recommended or rather a, a, a good start, mm. it will be at least twice a week on weight training. Mm. And if you can, at least do two to three hours of cardio in a week. Mm. This is to balance up. My life is about balance. Mm. So you want to have at least two to three hours cardio a week yeah. uh, together with two two uh, training sessions, yes. uh, two days of weight training, that would yep. be a very good start for you. Yeah. Yes, I know, um, I mean, in this era, all of us are busy, but I, I always find that we should not be as busy as we thought. Like, it's just that, frankly speaking, it's not busy. Busy is just a reason or an, yes. an excuse. It's more like we are lazy rather than busy that we are not exercising. So uh, for those who are interested to find out, like, you know, for me, the Lao Chiu, how often I exercise, uh, I'll just share with you my routine. Monday, normally I will train with Alvin. Tuesday is my yoga day. I really love the yoga class over here at Anytime Fitness. Wednesday is another training day with Alvin. And on Thursday, I normally would have another class over here for HIIT. And that builds up my cardiovascular. Uh, together with my muscles as well so you can see four consecutive days i'm tired so friday is my rest day but during my rest day what i will do is this is a friday i will go for stroll okay so some of you love breeze walking um, for me i love to stroll so i'll take like an hour to do my strolls and saturday sunday normally what i would do is i would just either do my trampoline jump i sign up classes for trampoline jump and uh, maybe there are days that i want to do my own workout I, I will come or maybe i'll do another trampoline jump so i do the things that i love to do and uh, it's always a balance that i've got stretches like yoga i've got uh, the gym workout that i carry with to build the muscle mass and i also have the cardiovascular type so you can design something on your own and i think most importantly is 
do the things that you love to do. I think some of you maybe are like me. Uh, last year, I wanted to start to do a workout in the gym, but I've got an issue. And what is that issue is, I look at all the machines. I don't know how to use them. And it gets so intimidating when I see all the muscle men was like, well, well, doing it. So maybe Elvin, you can let us, maybe help us a little bit. What should we do, uh, you know, like especially ladies or newbies who come to the gym, we sign up for a gym session and, and then we are like, oops, what should I be doing and how do I use the machine? What, what's the first step that we should be doing? Well, um, I always find that it's useful when you are starting um, your journey in the gym, mm -hmm. is to do some research on your own, like oh. everything in, in, else in life, okay. right? You can do some research online. I think there's a lot of information mm. online. Mm these days. The only thing is that because there's so much information, yes. it will lead to a lot of confusion. Yes. Yeah, that is why uh, if possible, it will be a good idea to consider mm. uh, engaging a personal trainer mm -hmm. to help you start off. Yes. It may not be for life that you have to take personal training, yeah. but at least uh, with a personal trainer, mm. uh, we help you to have a good start yeah. Yeah, and you are able to learn very quickly. In yes. fact, um, people feel that personal training is cost money. Yeah. I will actually say on the contrary that it saves you time. Yes. Yeah. So just bringing back to my own experience, if I had engaged a personal trainer earlier on, yep. you know, I would have saved a lot of time on my training. Yes. So yes. I, I believe time is money. So in fact, yeah, that, that, that's something that uh, people can consider as yeah, well. Yeah, I totally agree with Elvin. That's the reason why um, I engage a personal trainer. Uh, some of you will be thinking uh, it might cost quite a bit. Initially, you might think that, but uh, if you weigh the pros and the cons, the risks versus rewards, Imagine if you do not know how to use the machine, all right, and uh, you want to save the money. And we want to work out because uh, looking at long term, uh, having a good health, definitely financially, it will be much more rewarding, right? But we do not want a case where we injure ourselves. Exactly. I think that, that's the worst thing to get if we, you know, initially we want to be healthy. We go and set up for a gym package, right? And then after that, we're going to work out. But we do not know how to do it and oh, oops strain the back, strain the neck and then after that to recover takes another three months right so we are going to lose that three months not only that some of us may not recover properly and because we don't recover properly we might have certain uh, these injuries uh, that will actually become a, a lifetime thing uh, where uh, we, we, we really have always feel the pain uh, for those who probably have sprained your back before you know okay this is no joke once our back you know, or our neck got injured. This is going to be uh, causing a lot of problems in the future. And also some of us, maybe the knees, the ankles, yeah. So having a personal trainer really uh, can help us to start off. Maybe we could just have a six sessions or a 12 sessions, get to know the form. I think this is something that I've benefited from Elvin. Uh, the first few sessions when I do with him, uh, he just focus on one thing, the form. And he said, no, 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 you don't carry so much weight for us. I always tell Alvin, this is very simple, you know, it's very easy. And no, I'm focusing on your form to make sure that you get it right. So that when I load you with the weight, you don't injure yourself. So this is something I like about having a personal trainer. If not, I may just load in my weight. And for all I know, I may be stressing certain or straining certain muscles. Or I may even use the wrong muscles. Yeah, when it comes to training. And... In Chinese, we say lah, huh? we want to shi ban gong bei. Uh, we don't want to do it the other way, shi bei gong ban. Uh, right? We don't want to keep training, training, training. And we put in so much effort. Some of you were saying like two hours, three hours, yet you don't see any results. In fact, if you train, you get a personal trainer, and the personal trainer can help you. You can save time, right? Maybe two to three times a week, just one hour. You can see the difference in your body in a few months' time. Ah, okay, this is the next thing a few months time yeah. right yeah because a lot of people have this thing like oh i want to do workout okay and i want to lose 10 kg mm. in a month mm. so elvin can you help me with that <laughs> um well one thing uh man, most people wants want to have a uh, big weight loss and they want it fast yes. so people want large uh reduction in weight and they want it fast but the, the thing is that you want it to be sustainable sustainable and also healthy mm. actually 10 kgs a month is a bit too much for 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 weight loss oh. yeah because what happens if you lose too much weight too fast you're going to not only lose your fats mm. you're going to lose a lot of muscle as well mm. yeah so that will also have an impact on your health mm. and losing so much weight in the short period of time it causes a lot of stress to your yeah. body 
So yeah. I'm sure you hear of the yo-yo effect, right? Yes. Why, why does this happen? It's because you put your body in so much stress. By the time you revert back to your old ways, you start eating again, you stop exercising, the body is going to hold on and retain more fat than you had before. Yeah. So you see a lot of people, when they have very fast results, yes, their results are fast, but they always get back to their old ways faster and they, they, yeah. they gain much more weight than they lost actually. Yes. So what I always uh, want or wish for my clients to do is have it in a more consistent, sustainable, comfortable yeah. manner so that you can do it uh, for the long term, not just for that one month or two months. Yeah. Unless yeah. you're getting married, la. <laughs> within that one month and really I want to look the best okay I think that that's a good reason but mm. I think ultimately what we are advocating over here is longevity what we are advocating here is consistency such that we are able to maintain a good physique right mm. yeah it's not really to have okay if your aim is a six pack or an eight pack all right yes that's good but I think the whole idea is to be consistent such that we have this uh, healthy lifestyle yeah, yeah, and for longevity as well. Okay, so we talk so much of having a PT and the benefits of it. But the key thing is how to choose a good PT. Yeah. Well, firstly, you want to make sure that your PT is certified. Mm. Yeah. Uh, while the certification is just to make sure that the PT is trained mm. and has the relevant certificates, uh, it is not an indication whether the PT is good, of course. Yeah. The cert is just a start. Uh, the other thing you want to make sure is also if you're training in a gym like Anytime Fitness, mm. the PT is the official PT that is assigned to the gym. Yeah. It's working in the gym. Why? It's because if you're not satisfied with the, uh, the training, training yeah. you know, uh, you're able trainer. to train a trainer, there's some accountability mm. there. And also, I think also you need to speak to the trainer. Um, it's a very human thing that you, the rapport between the personal trainer and the client must be there as well. Yeah. Yeah, so that's something that you need to speak to the PT and understand yes. uh, his background yeah. and see whether he's able to uh, help you accomplish your goals and objectives. Yes. I think that's a very important thing. The key, first thing that I always look for when I uh, look for a personal trainer, first is that person has to understand my goal. What's my objective? Okay, is it about losing weight? Is it about losing body fat? Or is it about gaining? Some people are actually about gaining weight and gaining uh, the muscle mass. Right, don't want to be skinny and scrawny. So each of us, we have different objectives. Or some just say, you know what? I, it's not about weight. It's just that my energy is low. I want to work out because I want to make sure that I have that kind of energy. And exercise does help in building the energy, right? So have that session with your uh, PT. Talk to your PT. Okay, you might not want to engage the per the person first, but the first session maybe you'll say, okay, can I chat with you? You know, this is my goal, and then feel how comfortable you are chatting with a person, and maybe have a trial session. Yes. Yeah, I think a trial session is really good, and all fitness centers or any PDs, they are very happy to give you a trial session and see how do they do that trial session. Is that trial session uh, maybe talking more about the form? Do they explain to you which muscle you are using? Now, I should ask, which muscle? So if I were to train this, where do I feel the strain, you know? Where do I feel I'm working out? That is very important. If the trainer don't tell you anything, you say, okay, just do this, do this, ha. Huh? And then, I, I think the worst is they keep asking you to do it such that you, you really say that, oh, at the end of the day, I cannot feel anything because it is, this is just too much for me. You know, exercise is not about that. Exercise is not about, you know, wanting us to just live life flat and we cannot do anything. Yeah, that's what Alvin tell me. I remember the first time round when I did all the exercises, I tell Alvin, I mean, I still feel good, you know? <laughs> right, I, I don't think that I have, you know, every time when I do exercise, it's like a, a, an army training, no. After that, I started to realize building up our muscles and uh, having the exercise doesn't mean we need to do until to the, to the, the state that we really cannot breathe la, or uh, it is really tiring us out. No, we should feel more energized. On the contrary, we should feel more energized. Yeah, that means that we are working out. And also, it doesn't mean that we have to feel the muscle sore. Yes. This is something I also asked Alvin. I told Alvin, Alvin, I don't I didn't feel any muscle ache, you know? Does it mean that I've not worked out? Muscle ache. Do we have to really feel muscle ache every time we work out? Okay, so um, it is not necessary to mm. feel muscle ache all the time. Mm. Uh, it is not indication whether uh, you worked out or not using a muscle aches. Mm. So while having a muscle ache means that definitely something ha you have definitely done a good workout. Uh, not having it doesn't mean you know you did not work out uh, the muscles at all. Yeah. yeah. Yes, so uh, and I also think that very important thing where uh, how we find that a personal trainer is good is tracking. 
This is something that I like about El Alvin is uh, there's a spreadsheet and every time how many reps I've done, what is the weight, Alvin will track and then he will refer back and let me know, okay, the last round you did your bench press and you did like let's say 30 kg, okay, you did uh, 10 reps but on, on your last, uh, the fourth rep, you only did 8. So this time round, we are going to get better, we are going to maybe do 10 even until the fourth round, we are not going to increase weight. So things like that. So every round, there's actually a tracking system. So this is how I see whether a PT really, you know, um, has that system. I think a system is really important so that we know that we are progressing or not. Okay, so I hope you have benefited from this session because you right now know that exercise is not just about building the bulk, you know, our workout is not about being bulky, but really uh, to cut our fat, you know, to build our muscle. And uh, if you like this content, remember to uh, like and subscribe and you can share it with your friends as well. Okay, so uh, let me know your thoughts and put it down in the comments whether you have benefited from it and what you would like to know more about, let's say, exercise regime, about your physical health, all right? So remember, always come over to our TLC channel, The Lao Chiu, because we would like to share with you how you can have more tender loving care for yourself and for others.